Good morning. It's good to be here today. Isn't it really a great morning. Well, it's good to be well, here. Well, the today. point there is we, in, in Nigeria, so long as you have life, there's the belief that uh, there, is hope. there is hope. Even if things are economically or socially or politically, things are not going the way you expect. Mm. But so long as you have life, we believe that. That is why Nigerians are called or used to be called the happiest people on earth because mm. uh, anyhow it is, we'll just move on somehow. They know how there's to this, survive. There's this feeling that. It's just, all, whatever you ha you're going through now is just temporary. Mm. We're going to move and something is that's going to... Mentality. Yeah, that's survival mentality. So that, uh, that's, that's what keeps us going. That, that is what a person's feel is making um, Nigerians being taken for granted, mm. so to speak, mm. where things are happening. For instance, we're seeing uh, the pure scarcity. Now, it's lingered for more than two months mm -hmm. And this is unusual. We are, it is, we are counting down to the elections. This is the 31st of January. Uh, elections are just, I think, 24 days away. Yet we are still witnessing long queues across the country, mm -hmm. the hiking prices. Some places is being sold at 500 naira. Some other places over 300 naira. Yet we say we have, um, what is it called now, a subsidy. And we are still seeing the disparity in prices. We are a country that produces you know, crude is going through this kind of crisis. Yeah. Nigerians are wailing mm. practically. And you tell me that it's because... No, my well, the, 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 the point there is we, we've been used to this for a long time. In fact, we were born into fuel scarcity. We, we, this is part of our lives. It's a hard life, but that is what an average Nigerian is used to. The point there is we travel to other countries, you breathe some fresh air, oh... You take pictures, you make videos of how beautiful the place is and so on. And then you come back to Nigeria and then there's the mode. You just switch back Once into... Once you get to the airport. Yeah, you get to the airport, you switch back into that mode. Okay, Nigeria mode on. Your our <laughs> Nigeria mode activated. Yeah. You know, so when Nigeria mode activated, then <clears throat> that's, that's, that ruggedness, that ruggedness of, of, Niger of Nigerianness mm. kicks in. But it tells us that it's a terrible situation for an average Nigerian, what an average Nigerian goes through and survives and keeps going and smiling, these are the things that cause chaos in so many countries around the world. Because Absolutely. they can't stand what a Nigerian stands. But we stands, cannot continue like right? this. But the point there is, I believe that this is an opportunity. This election or every election cycle is an opportunity for Nigerians to, to, to reason. Reason. Go back and say, okay, now is the, is the time for us to make the change that we want to make. Now is the time for us to mold the destiny that we want to mold. Who do we think can lead us to that kind of Nigeria that when we travel outside, even to all the African countries, we're like, wow, this is good. How this is, is it working. that everything is, is nice. working? Everything is, Systems it is are not rocket place. science to run a country. Right? Uh, of course, you will say democracy is not easy, yes. But if other countries can do it, what why, is can't, it? why we? can't we? When we have led all these countries, we support them in every way as the case may be. So how, what is the difficult thing in, 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 in making Nigeria work? work. So, so it's, not, uh, it's not a good thing, but that is what makes who we are. That's why an average Nigerian goes anywhere in the world and you see him excel. But we can do better. We need to do because better. Because we deserve, we deserve better. We deserve better. Nigeria, Nigeria has everything. So we don't have... We don't have any reason why there should be poverty in the magnitude to which it is. We don't have any reason why Nigeria should be suffering through, go, going through all of the things that they go through. Because we've gone through a lot for mm. so many years that by now, it, is, it, is, it, is, it won't be out of place to say, okay, we've tried this, it didn't work. We tried it, it didn't work. We tried this, it didn't work. We tried that, it didn't work. Let us try something new. There are so many other formula we can... We, we went to, to uh, at Independence, we borrowed the system of government from Britain. At, in 1979, we went to the U.S., borrowed another one. As If it is not working, or one would say maybe it's not even the system of government. Maybe it's just our kind of person. It's just maybe our, the way we... What is we, this we our relate. kind of person? I, I, we, well, <laughs> the point there is, some people just feel, some people feel that, you see... When it comes to multi-dimensional or multi-ethnic, or multi Nigeria is not the only multi-ethnic country in the world. Oh. Nigeria is not the only multi-religious country in the world. All of the, there are so many. Go to Canada. There are so many different vibes and tribes and whatever in, in Canada, for instance. But one was okay, it's a Western country. Hey, but if you bring it back to Nigeria, even go to South Africa, 
what they call the Rainbow Nation. Mm -hmm. There are some are different tribes in, uh, in, South, in Africa. South Africa. There are different religions in South Africa. They mm -hmm. all coexist right. and everything moves on. Mm -hmm. So the point there is that Nigeria, what, what goes on in Nigeria is not strange. As in the, the, the peculiar, I mean, our peculiarity, our history is not, is not strange. So but, we, but if, we, if we don't learn it, we, we have to learn it from somewhere else. Uh, of fuel scarcity is really biting hard and needs to be addressed as quickly as possible. We had seen a DSS intervention that didn't change much. We are still here again. Pengasin is saying that marketers have to be held responsible and something, some drastic action has to be taken to addressing this matter. We saw the protest in Edo State mm -hmm. where, you know, people came out... Um, Tires being burnt everywhere because of the hiking price. Now there's also no electricity. And this is what Nigerians need to, to survive. Something has to be done, and that has to be done as quickly as possible.